So, our next presenter, uh, I've uh, read some of his work and I'm happy to introduce uh, um, Mr. Parrish. And uh, he is a NIMS uh, biologist for 23 years, worked on fisheries and protected species in Hawaii and Mexico. Considers himself a habitat ecologist. Uh, although I know he has a PhD in, geog in uh, geography um, from the University of Hawaii in 2004, um, his interests span from habitat ecology, fisheries, fish communities, monofield foraging, deep sea corals, lobster habitat modeling, uh, particular interest in Northwest Hawaiian Islands, where he's done quite a bit of field work. Recent publication. Few monk seals exert top down pressure in subphotic ecosystems in marine mammal science. Thank you for joining us. So I want to thank the group for having me here. This is a this is kind of a nice to maybe an end. I don't know. It's a nice end to this camera project that I got brought into. Um, it's kind of outside of what I normally do. I'm very much a field researcher. And this was much more of a, a process and interagency type thing. I suspect I wasn't looking busy enough and the director noticed and said, okay, you're going to do this. And that's how, that's how I got into it. Um, so, I'm going to try this here. This is what I'm going to talk about today. Um, this is a document that basically catches it all. And at the end, I'll give you the opportunity to email me if you want a copy of the document. I can send it to you by PDF. Uh, this isn't an outline slide, but it, it serves very well as an outline slide, so like most of my successes, it's by accident. Uh, up at the top, we're going to talk about what the document is. It's a, it's a concept document. The key here is it is a science plan, okay? So when you guys are talking about ecosystem-based fishery management, this is very much a science plan, but the science plan is completely driven by the managers from the very beginning. So the scientists were basically told what they were going to be working on by the management group. Basically, the management group came up with the research themes and they came up with what the guiding principles were going to be. And then we got the input from the scientists, and at the end we had an independent review of the concept. And essentially, that's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, it kind of started with this. This was the Northwestern Hawaiian Island Symposium, and then we had a, uh, a volume come out with all the science that was presented. In. Very much a science symposium was about the Northwestern Hawaiian Island, but at that time there was talk about where it was going. The Northwest Islands was going through a big management change. This is it uh, right here. I can actually, uh, there we go, right there. That's the Northwest Islands. This is the main one Islands down here. So like 30 years, the Northwest Islands, we've had really dedicated science done up there. Uh, to a large degree, it was associated with the uh, establishment of the EEZ. And then there was some money provided by the State Department to do some really broad, really, really broad science studies that included State, federal, and uh, we're talking NOAA, we're talking Department of Interior. So there was a lot of activity up in that area. And most recently, this has become a uh, National Marine Monument. And so you heard Lisa talk about the sanctuary program. Initially, it was designated a sanctuary, and then it converted to a monument. Prior to this time, most of the management up there was associated with fisheries. And this changed our world. I mean, suddenly we had a monument that had a totally different emphasis. And she did a great job learning out what that emphasis is. And if you think about what it is to be a fishery scientist, fishery manager, these emphasis come in. You've got cultural considerations. You've got use considerations. And fisheries is no longer the big issue. So that symposium was kind of like a way of summing up what we had done and talking about where it was going to go in the future. The big thing here is that in Northwestern Long Island, the fishing that had happened was very discreet. We had some trap fisheries. We had some bottom fish fisheries, but most of the reefs and things like that were left untouched. Down in the main islands, we had some heavy duty reef fisheries down there, as well as bottom fish and trap fisheries. And so this provided some unique opportunities for comparison that you've probably heard about Northwestern Wine Islands versus the main Wine Islands. So there was a lot of consideration about having this ecosystem plan put together for the entire archipelago. Uh, the idea was to basically have an insular related plan. Our big fisheries are pelagic, but this would be an opportunity to look at specifically insular issues. And the strange word was the opportunity for a comparative approach. We have a long history of scientific monitoring. We have some real timely ecosystem management issues coming up, so essentially associated with the monument being established. 
And uh, there was a multidisciplinary approach in the sense that we had a lot of different players in the game for a long time. So we could bring a lot of different aspects from history to oceanography to genetics. So it looked pretty promising. It was pretty clear early on we had certain challenges we had to deal with. There were these different, different uh, institutional mandates and their constituencies. So the public basically functions through these different institutions. You know, they have their own constituency, they have their own scoping process, and so each of these institutions basically represents some cross-section of, of the public. There are also jurisdictional issues. For like fisheries, we follow where the fish go, but then all the state, they had a jurisdictional boundary, the Fish and Wildlife Service had their, their jurisdictional boundary, and then now we had the monument boundary. So that was a, that was a feature way to work around. And then there was this differing ecosystem philosophies, which I'm sure you all guys, all of you are aware of. I've always seen people have different notions about where, where the ecosystem is and what it, what it involves. So we had to struggle with that as well. Now, part of my plan, when I got asked to come up here, I started looking through the plan, I'm going, where are the fishers? I was trying to find fishers in the plan. And I just realized that I'm going to have to tell you where the fish is in the plan, because if we just said this was going to be a fisheries plan, I can tell you right up front, the monument people are going to go, well, they're not going to end fishers in the monument. So, and then the state would say, well, we have area closures. So suddenly, we really have to kind of change our mindset and say, this is an ecosystem plan with fisheries aspects in it. And so we have to keep our, keep our eye out to see where they are. Right here, this is just a list of the input fisheries that we've got in the Hawaiian Archipelago. And I just wanted to point out we have these protected species are also part of the fisheries consideration. And then we have these emerging mandates, which we all hear about. Habitat restoration, and marine protected areas, climate change, ecosystem assessment, there's a whole bunch of other ones. But ultimately, these are the kinds of things that the National Marine Fisheries Service has to think about as part of this mandate. So, after the symposium was over, the, they created a management team. It wasn't called the Hammer Management Team at the time, but that's what I'm going to call it now. And these were the, these were the players. These were basically the the heads of these organizations from the region, and they sat in the same room. And I can't remember who it was that said it was hard to get them to stay, sit in the same room. These guys sat in the same room probably 15, 20 times over an 18 month period. And, you know, they basically talked through a lot of these different issues. And as you can see, we've got science centers, we've got, uh, we've got the monument, we've got the state, which had its own interest. I mean, they were more interested in invasive species than they were about fisheries. Certainly, Fish and Wildlife Service was more interested in protecting resources. Uh, Western Pacific Fishery Management Council, the classic fishery management council, that had its, its constituency to be, uh, to be addressed. And then we had the University of Hawaii who was just interested in getting in there and answering whatever questions that uh, people wanted to put to them. So, um, probably the first five meetings, they struggled with the mission statement, like every group does. And then on the last meeting, I think they changed it. But anyway, this is what it is in the end. It's to achieve sustainable conservation and management of Hawaii's marine ecosystem through improved understanding of the unique physical and biological attributes of the Hawaiian archipelagic marine ecosystem, their inter interconnected dynamics, and their interactions with human beings. I was generally concerned we weren't going to get it on one slide. But um, it captures pretty much everything. Um, and the, the objectives were pretty straightforward. They wanted to build critically uh, critically important research gaps, and critically important is the key here. Now, I'll get back to it later. They want to know what's important. They didn't want to just fill every research gap. They wanted to identify what that was. They wanted to complement uh, national and international research initiatives in ecosystem science. They wanted to improve the understanding um, of the behavior in humans and marine ecosystems, and uh, formulate predictive theory of ecosystem dynamics, and generate useful information for conservation managers. So they came up with these guiding principles, okay? This was just the principles to basically talk about when you come to us with a research project, this is what we're going to be looking at. And ultimately, you know, if you, if you, can't, if you can't answer these questions, then you're probably not going to go very high in the, in the process. First and foremost, this is a process-oriented plan, 10-year plan is what they envisioned. So they wanted a testable hypothesis. So what? You're going to come with a research project, what is it that you're going to show us in the end that's going to basically change the state of knowledge? Uh, we have a lot of monitoring programs going on, and they've been going on for a long time. And a lot of questions have been, are we monitoring the right things? Um, understand the physical, biological, and social processes at the archipelagic scale. Scale is important. You've heard it several times today. Scale was very important to these people. 
Uh, employee comparisons. We want to compare the approaches between the main Hawaiian Islands and our Western Hawaiian Islands and the human component. You know, basically, for a long time, we've been studying the system independent of the human component. They wanted to have more of an emphasis with the human component. Conduct the research at a scale and intensity suitable to advance ecosystem modeling and forecasting. They want to start creating theory that they can basically, some of the things that Jason just showed, start being able to look at this and start having scenarios laid out in front of them so that they can use that as kind of decision-making matrix. So the process, the agency management team was up at the top. After they laid out these guidelines, they grabbed individuals, and I'm, I'm in the middle there, I was asked to be the chair. And so they grabbed individuals from all the different agencies, and we all sat down and had this postgraduate seminar over the course of 18 months. We met on a monthly basis and basically worked through a lot of different things and set up a series of focus groups, and then the scientists fed in information within the structure that was given to them by the management team. So they came up with six uh, themes and goals, and they are process-oriented. They wanted ecosystem indicators and metrics identified. Uh, it was to identify key ecosystem variables for long-term monitoring. We were doing a lot of long-term monitoring. The question was, where we want to the right variables, and they want that figured out because ultimately just getting the ship up there and getting back is a 30 day investment and costs big money. And they were concerned about actually doing more harm by introducing invasive species than actually doing good as far as doing the monitoring. Native biodiversity and invasive species was a hot topic, and they wanted a biotic inventory to appraise current and potential impact of alien species. And the, Number three, connectivity was, was one of the biggest because it's such a large archipelago. They wanted to identify subregions and boundaries that are ecologically meaningful. As far as human interactions, uh, they wanted to document spatial and temporal resource use and distinguish the anthropogenic changes from the natural variability. Sustainability and resilience and recovery, that was the fifth one. You had to understand the capacity and the mechanisms of resilience in the natural system. This is a lot of our fisheries fell into this capacity and we're interested in knowing to what degree our fishery is going to rebound under a closed system. And then finally, uh, modeling and forecasting, and that's to develop the means to advance forecasting in natural systems. So if you look at these things, you know, basically you look at our physical, biological, and social, to divide the science up that way, they go across all the different themes, some more than others. Uh, that was important. Basically, that you weren't going to go out there and have a program on oceanography, and you weren't going to have a program on fisheries. You were going to have a program that crossed the themes, and they weren't necessarily going to all be addressed at the same time. If people came in with a, with a testable hypothesis that basically addressed a specific issue, that got promoted, and that would be where it would go. Um, basically, there were expected near and far term projects. I don't expect you to, to read this slide, but you would come up with an overall strategic goal for your six teams, you come up with your near term, you come up with your intermediate term, you come up with your far term, and basically you would lay this out, and what you'd be looking at is like a 10 year time, timeline to basically address this process. The idea is to fast track your ability to come up with advancing your ecosystem science and management. And so by 2020, uh, we have, oh, sorry, by 2020 we have our archipelagic goal for ecosystem, which is basically structuring some kind of ecosystem models in place to be able to start, I mean, Jason just laid out a beautiful time series of data where they could basically start talking about what could happen. We're not there. And the idea is to fast track that and get to a place where you can say in the year 2020, start looking at it and have periodic symposium and review throughout that 10 year period to do a reevaluation. So, I mean, I'm just gonna take one example. Here's connectivity. We got the scientists, we brought them into a room, we sat down. They basically started looking at the stuff that was given to them by the managers. They worked through it and they came up with their own, their subgroups. So by connect connectivity, they came up with hydrodynamics and movement studies, developed taxa, population genetic structure, transport modeling. Then uh, they basically started to put these themes, you know, into, into, into kind of a, a series of missions. So if you look at the document, it has a description of the overall theme and then a table of priorities as to what, uh, what those should be, where the areas of emphasis are, and then it kind of comes up with these certain mission descriptions, and each of these mission elements are listed in an appendix. So here's a table for connectivity, you see the hydrodynamics, tells you what your focus areas are, what the example investigation would be, what your products are, and you know, you got to give you an idea what the mission elements are right there, there's an example of two of them, you go to the appendix of the document, 
and you see a layout that we talk about, okay, if you're going to look at hydrodynamics, you have a fixed instrumentation mission, and basically what the objectives were, and then the structure of the, the plan would be such that if somebody just come in with a question like that, they would deal with it that way. If you have hydrodynamics, you'd want a strategic sampling one, they do it that way. So the idea is if you come in with your plan, you lay it out, and the managers could basically start putting it within their scope of priorities. In the end, this is what you got. You got your, your research teams across the top, you've got your goals at the bottom, and you've got a long list of these, these missions that are, that are in between the kind of transitional steps to get to it. There was no prioritization done, and the reason why is that was just decided that it's a concept document, and they were going to have to go to a place where they would have to do that actual project. And it would be dependent upon the principles. If somebody came in with a project, how well they met the principles that were laid out. So back to the fisheries. So I went through the document and I said, well, where's the fisheries? And I was trying to figure out, going through the different themes, and I said, all right, well, I'll ignore the oceanography, and I'll ignore all the, all the things that clearly can afford, uh, affect fisheries indirectly, and just look at the things that deal with fish. And if you look at it across those themes, 16 out of 29 of the total missions deal directly with fish. So roughly half of them have fish contact. And what I thought was kind of interesting was that the human dimension actually had the most. And I didn't, I didn't expect that. Um, in fact, I didn't even notice it until I just looked at it, the document recently. And so the human dimension is basically a bunch of mission sheets that are looking at what the, the eco -shift, ecosystem shift is associated with fisheries, uh, what the interactions are as far as implementing restoration of fisheries, trying to bring them back, retrospective analysis of fisheries, trying to see to what degree, you know, the, the, the history uh, uh, predict, uh, predicts what's going on right now, what will happen in the future. And there's, uh, there's some others, but any stocking assessments for seafood safety. So a number of these came up, and they were very much human-related. Anyway, uh, after it was over with, we said, okay, what are we going to do? And we said, all right, well, let's have somebody. What does that say, 10? Okay, well, we won't need 10. Um, who are we going to gonna have come look at it? So we've got a review panel. Um, you might know these usual suspects down here. Uh, they, they came down to why they sat through a death by PowerPoint situation where we had a bunch of people come in and, you know, talk to them. And then we had a great day afterwards where they sat around in a room and they basically picked around a bunch of ideas. And I, it, was, it was great for me to be able to sit in that room and listen to them and knock around the, the plan. And they came up with a, a, you know, a short report and it's actually included in the document. And they had made a series of recommendations. They endorsed the themes they thought it was relevant to management and ecosystem science. Uh, the, the, the synthesis research should have be been moved to beginning the program. I had it at the back. And I do a little bit of synthesis stuff, and I was kind of the chair, and I felt like, well, I'll just, you know, set back. I won't be overbearing. And they said, move it up front. And when I came back to the group, and I said, well, they're telling me I should move the synthesis stuff up front. The rest of the crowd, I thought I was trying to pull a fast one. But, um, but it's very appropriate, because now Cameo came out. And Cameo, which is a comparative analysis of marine ecosystem organization for national efficiency, that's what they're saying. Front load your synthesis stuff. So they were right on the mark. Um, Synthesis should be continuous and in an integrated fashion with the priorities updated. We had sort of that in the plan. There should be an information system that will be needed to organize the data. And um, the other thing that they said for as far as implementation, which was a step that we were thinking, you know, we're going to have to go to the next, is we've got to form an advisory board. This was the most interesting one. Dave Bluehardy brought this up. We need to develop an agreed upon vision for 2020. And it was interesting when I went back to the group and I presented these things to them. Everybody was looking around the room and I said, so, do we have an agreed upon vision for 2020? And everybody just kind of looked at each other and nobody said anything. So I suspect that's an interesting exercise that should be undertaken is to see how far apart have they done independently by them and then have them compare it and see how much it diverges because with that diverse management group, I suspect the visions are pretty different. Develop process for prioritizing research. Uh, use adaptive approach and schedule periodic evaluations of symposiums and reviews. And they suggested adopting a two-tiered approach in research, foundation work versus process work. It is true we had our mapping and monitoring buried in there, and it really was strategic in nature because it's considered a 10-year program, not a, not a 20-year or 30-year program. So they suggested breaking it out. So current status, the document uh, is, is done, it's out there. The good news is the monument actually took the themes and has now put it in their science plan, which is really good. So now the entire archipelago, the state has it in their plan, the monument's using it in their plan. 
So it's serving as a framework for regional multi-agency research activities. So like when we did our submission for Cameo, they grabbed pieces of that, stuck it in there, and then if Cameo were to get funded, it would actually be structured within the, the multi-agency framework. So it, it serves in that capacity as kind of a, a menu of what we want to do, and we fill it out as we can. But there's still no support for the full plan, and in the end, that's the problem. You can have a grassroots movement like this. You can have people sit together and work really well together. But we haven't seen funding like the EEZ funding, which happened 30 years ago, which they said, get out there, find out what the resource is, and you know, deal with the issue in a multi-agency way. We haven't seen anything like that in 30 years. If something like that were to show up for ecosystem science, well, that's exactly what this was supposed to be set up for and be ready to move ahead. I haven't seen anything on the horizon that suggests that. But um, if you want a copy of the document, I can send you a PDF. Just take down my email, email me, and I'll send it to you tonight. It's on my laptop. And that's all I've got. Any questions for Frank? It seems like one area where the development issue is really interesting because of all of the overlapping jurisdictions. I wonder if you could comment upon how any potential conflict, jurisdictional conflicts, have competed or maybe got solved through this process. Well, I mean, to some degree, we would walk in the room and we'd say, these are our fishery interests. And, for example, the Northwestern Islands provides us an opportunity. I mean, as I'll say, the question was, to what degree do jurisdictional dis districts uh, complicate the, the, uh, the exercise? And they do to some degree. I mean, they also provide some opportunities as well. The fact that the Northwestern Islands is closed down, being closed down as a monument presents some unique opportunities. Opportunity to basically do these comparative analysis, which is which is I mean, a, a, a golden chance for us to go out and answer some ecosystem science questions. The challenge, though, is how do you go out and do that? Can you actually go out there and do some fishing or some trapping or some kind of you know uh, uh, activity that will basically give you an answer to your question? And and the answer may be in fact no, just because the constituency for the monument will be saying no. The reason we wanted it closed. And so the challenge was, how can you answer that question without maybe using your conventional tools? Maybe you find some non-legal way to address that. And that's what this was all about, coming up with a means to do it. And I think to a large degree, even though that's inconvenient in the short term as far as meeting, you know, the answer for one particular question, in the long term, finding non-legal ways to basically address some of these issues and some of our stock requirements, I mean, the area closures are invalidating a lot of our stock assessment models, and so now, you know, you're going to have to come up with this. And so, I think to some degree it was an inconvenience, but it's something we're going to have to deal with sooner or later. So, I got, I didn't get a sense that it was a point of uh, hostility or frustration with the group. It was just how to, how to go about doing it. And certainly there was a level of suspicion when we were putting the hammer plan together. Uh, it wasn't by the agencies, it was by the, it's by the public, the constituents. They're so like, what is this? You know, why do you need to do science up there? We're going to close it, things like that. So, um, as soon as we got the plan together and we started putting it out for the constituents to see, they pretty much relaxed. Probably because all of the fisheries was nested within wider ecosystem programs. And when anybody asked me about it, I said, well, yeah, there's the fishery stuff in there, but as they read it, it's not so obvious that it's just sticking out in their face. It's basically addressing the ecosystem issues of resilience, broader ecosystem issues than just what our fishery management ecosystem issues are. And so I think, to some degree, yeah, it was inconvenient at times, but it was not an Asian hassle. Frank, I have a quick mm -hmm. question, which is it's relevant, I think, for trying to link this a bit to the Puget Sound area. Um, Alani Wilhelm, the mm -hmm. monument, Superintendent uh, Dave and I and others have been working with her on some of the, the governance issues on the Northwest Hawaiian Islands. And Alani came to a class here, uh, it's a joint class between the School of Marine Affairs and, and the Northwest. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, it's up at Dillingham and Alumni Reservation at the Northwest Indians College. And Alani gave a very interesting presentation that resonated with a lot of the Alumni students up there about the human dimensions of Native Hawaiians, Mm -hmm. and perceptions of the, the Northwest Hawaiian Island. And your comments about the preponderance the, of human dimensions as being part of the plan, I don't think is any coincidence. I think perhaps the fact, I would hypothesize that Alani as a Native Hawaiian 
would help ensure that. Oh, yeah, because of the worldview, and similarly yeah. for the Salish people of Puget Sound, they're interested in management plans for Puget Sound that have that perspective as well. So is there any truth to that? No, no absolutely. Armani was on the management team. She was sitting in the room and she had all those, those, those concerns to put forward. But I don't want to, I don't want to just say that that was one of the prime, I mean, that was certainly a contribution she made at the same time. She was the one who was constantly saying, so what? And I heard that over and over again, and she made no bones about it. So what? You do this science, and so what? Okay, I want to know, I want to know what it is that I can tell my constituents that we're getting out of this science, and then ultimately, I want to be able to justify ships going up there, you know, potential. I mean, anytime you put somebody up there to the the ship's going to go up on reef, or something's going to spill, or it's going to transport, you know, an invasive species. So in the end, the question was, so what? So certainly the cultural stuff was put, put out there and talked about to a large degree. At the same time, though, they were just as, it was just as much about, you know, to what degree is this science really going to advance, ecosystem science advanced management of the, of, the, uh, of the resource. And I was put on notice from the very beginning that this was going to be, you know, run by management and not by my particular science interest. And so uh, it, was, it, was, it was an interesting process. And, and now that the plan is over, it's kind of too bad because we had a regular set of meetings where we sat in the room and it was kind of dialogue we're having here. And so to have that on a periodic basis, you know, once a month, that's not altogether, that's pretty valuable, you know, for a regional management activity. Well, thank you so much. <laughs>